I'm so excited to be here this afternoon and I'm really glad that you're all able to join us in yet another grand event brought to you by none other than Epic Voyage. Epic is the brainchild of Lee Edling and its mission is to bring exclusive lifestyle experiences to the shores of Malaysia. The name itself holds very special meaning. Epic meaning grand and voyage journey. So life is after all a journey. And while we're on it, EPIC will help us make it a grand one. Today, their commitment to bring only the best to us is once again proven in this forthcoming event, Bandy Control's Photography Workshop and Masterclass. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Bandy Control is a world-renowned wedding and portrait photographer, one of the most decorated and celebrated professional photographers of all our time. Uh, after years of photography, some of the most exquisite and breathtaking wedding and portrait images from all over the world, countless awards, and I really mean countless awards, and accolades, plus three best-selling photography books with another one on the way, Miss Bambi Cantrell is virtually a household name. She's a member of both Wedding and Portrait Photographers International, WPPI, and Professional Photographers of America, PPA. Uh, highly regarded in the photography industry as the foremost expert lighting on lighting and posing, Bambi spends a great deal of her time educating photographers from all over the world in workshops and conventions. We have all been inspired by her creative work and now she has flown all the way to Malaysia to present us this unique learning opportunity. So for this, we say terima kasih, Ms. Bambi Kentra. all so very much. You know, almost 30 years I have been photographing, and if you had talked to me 30 years ago when I got started, I would have never dreamt that I'd be standing in front of an amazing audience here in Malaysia um, and talking to you about my dream and what I love doing, which is creating beautiful images for people. You know, I came from very humble beginnings. I was a very poor child, my family had nothing. I do not have a formal education to this day. I did not graduate from any university. The one thing I did have, though, is I had drive. I had ambition, and I'm not afraid to make mistakes. Couple that with an absolute burning desire and love of people. And I really believe that that's why I am successful today, because after everything is said and done, I'm not afraid to make a mistake. It's OK. The worst thing that can happen is someone will not like a picture that we take. And you know what? You're not going to get cancer if you take a bad photograph. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be dead by now. I'm also, I am truly profoundly grateful for the fact that no matter where I go in the world, I find that people are people. Especially when you put a camera in their hand, it truly transcends gender, it transcends time zones, and no matter where you go in the world, I can see that same sparkle in your eye that is in every other person's eye that I've seen that has a camera. The other thing that I've noticed is that cameras are an amazing tool, but at the end of the day, it is that, a tool. What really matters is what's in here, in your heart, and that at the end of the day, that is what comes out and that cameras don't take pictures, even though I have a really great Canon camera that I love using, but that people take photographs. I'm very, very grateful to my dear friend Lee Adelaide for bringing me here. This woman, I hope you realize how much work she and Epic Voyages have done to bring me to Malaysia. It was just an amazing experience. And, and I must tell you, I have never been treated with such honor and graciousness as she has done. And I'm truly grateful to you and to Epic Voyages for the first class treatment. It makes me feel very, very special. <coughs> for those of you that are attending the workshop and the classes that we're going to do in the next three days, I am so excited to be able to give you all the knowledge that I possess. My goal is that all of you in this room and those that attend the workshop and the master classes, that you elevate, that we elevate together professional photography. I believe that it takes more than just 
you know, pressing that shutter to take a good image. And my goal is that we show people what it's really all about. And that whether you photograph weddings or family phot photography, or whether you photograph children, or do fine artwork, that it will be an amazing, amazing experience, and that you will be able to elevate your craft and be those individuals that will be the core for an even better style and an, uh, an impressive professional organization. As, and that's what I hope to bring, is that we can really elevate the professional photographer. For those of you that will be taking these classes that are currently amateurs or budding photographers, I hope that it unleashes in you a burning desire to become true professionals and become one of us. Because I have to tell you, after living almost 30 years as a professional photographer and still getting to live my dream, I love what I do. And the fact that someone pays me really well to create those beautiful images is just the icing on the cake. You see, I run a very busy photography studio myself in Northern California. I don't make my living speaking or educating, even though it is something I love doing. I'm one of you. I still make my living as a photographer who works with clients on a daily basis. And yes, children are running around in my studio quite often as I photograph them. And yes, I still photograph lots of weddings. And I too would love to photograph your wedding here in Malaysia, just for the record. <laughs> I had to bring that up. So. Um, and you have some remarkable locations, such as this amazing, amazing hotel. So I don't want to rattle on a long time because I know there's lots of other things that are going to happen today. Um, but I'm very open and I do answer all of my own emails personally. Um, please come up to me personally and let's talk. Because I think that it's what, what it's all about is people and you and I. And that to me is what makes the world go round. So thank you so much for your warm hospitality. I thank you truly from the bottom of my heart. And I look forward to getting to know all of you a great deal more during the next couple of days. So thanks so much. Um, can I just not use the mic? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I heard uh, earlier that you have a new book coming out. When is that coming out? That's the first question. Thank you so much for asking. Um, my new book is entitled The Language of Lighting and Posing. It's uh, published by, it can be published by Random House, and it's coming out in about March of 2013. And the book is, um, is, is going to be my very best book I've ever written so far. Um, it is, I'm so excited about it because it's all about posing and lighting for weddings and portraits and photographing children and doing beautiful boudoir and fine art nude work. Because for me, it's all the same thing. If you're photographing weddings, you can absolutely photograph beautiful family portraits. If you <coughs> photograph children, you can photograph weddings. Because actually, babies and brides have a lot in common. They're, they both have a meltdown, you know. <laughs> um, they both are very, you know, they can be very unpredictable, you know. Trying to get them to stand still is a joke. And so um, um, it really made me realize that it's all part of the same thing. If they're people, the secret to success is not designated whether somebody is wearing a white dress that happens to have beads on it, but it's about knowing where to stand in relation to the light source. And that at the end of the day, people want to have a flattering pose of themselves done. It's not just about having lots of pictures taken. And that's to me what separates someone who is a professional versus someone that just happens to have a good camera, is that a professional should be able to make a flattering picture of their subject. Because let's face it, all of us have had horrible pictures taken. I just don't know who that old lady that shows up every time I have mine done. I just don't know who she is. So, um, so it's about having beautiful, flattering pictures of us taken. And my goal is to create imagery that flatters the subject and that shows dignity to the subject. And that's what the new book that's coming out next March will be all about. Thank you so much for asking about it. Wow, thank you very much. What do you, like, I mean, I know you shoot for, as a job. Uh -huh. Do you shoot for fun? Or if you do, what do you shoot for fun? Ooh. That's an excellent question. What do I photograph for fun? Well, first of all, photography is my hobby. It is also my profession. And I'm one of the few people in the world who get to do what they love to do. Um, 
I would have to say my favorite thing to photograph is um, the fine art work. I love doing fine art nude work. Um, I think that the female form in, in a fine art concept is very, very beautiful. But it's really hard for me to designate one thing because I love the spontaneity of a wedding. I love the fact that it's not a perfect venue and that you have to think really quickly on your feet and that what you have in your mind so many times when you're, you're at a wedding, you're thinking, okay, I'm going to photograph it this way and I'm at this beautiful Sanjaya Hotel and I'm going to do this, this, and this. And then something else happens and then you can't photograph the way you wanted to, so you have to go to plan B or plan C in your mind. Um, my favorite um, events to photograph work, though, are it's not about whether somebody has lots of money. It's about the humanity. That's what I love above all, is photographing the humanity. Um, I've photographed some very famous people. The Estee Lauder family is one of my uh, big clients. And the greatest thing that I've learned is, you know what? After the name Estee Lauder, there are people behind that name that are just moms and dads, just like I'm a mother and that they have children that they love and that they have want the best for. And that, you know, I, and I have photographs of princesses in Dubai and when I met um, this family in Dubai that I photographed recently and photographed a wedding for uh, one of the princesses, I said, you know what? She's just like me. And that, that's, I guess, the thing above all. I, I love the fact that no matter where I go in the world, that yes, there are some wonderful traditional things that, that make each of those um, elements different, but that the core values are the same, and that it's about love, and about family, and family values, and about mothers and dads and grandparents, and about family traditions, and that's, I think, above all of everything else. To me, weddings and portraits are about family history, and that's why I feel very grateful that I get to be the recorder of family history. Hi, Mandy. Um, in the States, when you're doing wedding photography, is it typically on the day of the event? That's a really good question, yes. For me, my wedding day is the day, the day of the event. Personally, I, it would be, you know, it's nice to be able to have several hours to photograph the bride and groom by themselves. But it's really funny, you would think San Francisco is really cool and trendy and that they would want that. But I find that my brides and grooms tend to be very traditional in that the bride, the groom and the bride don't want to see one another beforehand. And I like the challenge of doing it their way as opposed to doing it my way. And one of the things that I've learned is that at the end of the day, that it's about them and their event. And I believe I'm a photographer of humanity, so I can photograph weddings that are very traditional. Um, I'm very popular in the Chinese community in San Francisco and do lots of Chinese weddings. And I love the lion dance and the tea ceremonies, and, and those are quite different than some of the, um, the, the other weddings for just Caucasian people in the Bay Area. Um, and yet I find that they're the common thread no matter what I'm, who I'm photographing, whether it be a, a beautiful Jewish wedding or, or whatever, is that it is about those, those people and what they want. And so I really am very fine-tuned in my mind about learning about who they are. And so I, I try to find out what that real smile looks like from that bride versus the fake one we put on for people that we don't know. And so thank you for that question, that's a good one. So the, the reason I was asking that is because, do you think, I mean, you used the word spontaneity earlier, you're trying to capture the magic of a moment, a special occasion. And, and again, I'm glad you touched on the fact the, the, the Chinese community in San Francisco. The reason I'm asking this question, I live in Hong Kong, I live right by the sea, and obviously it's, you know, I'm the outsider in Hong Kong. But the locals are totally obsessed with photography and also totally obsessed with photography for their weddings. And I've, I've gathered that the wedding photographs are typically taken six months before the event, six months after the event. Where does the spontaneity come into that? Well, you know, that's actually, I would think that, that probably in your mind it could be not a lot of spontaneity. But you know what, when you get two people who love one another, you know, that's really what it's all about. Whether they're having those beautiful photographs done before their wedding, in their beautiful wedding gowns, the common denominator is the love for, that two people have for one another. I will tell you that I find there's nothing like the wedding day experience itself. That I can take a couple out and do portraits of them before their wedding and 
I don't photograph them generally in their wedding attire before the wedding, but I will do beautiful portraits of them in, in, as an engagement session in their regular street clothes before their wedding. And that session is critical to me to find out who they are inside. So when they first come in, they may be all trying to be perfect and, and want to say, oh, they get all concerned about, well, is my hair correct? And, and you know, am, am I going to give the right kind of smile? My goal with that client is to give them a reason to smile, not ask them to do so. And so that tells me a lot about who they are. So I just have a very relaxed approach to that. I don't try to overpose people and to make them be, you know, put them in my mold. I don't try to make them become who I want them to be. And because of that, I find that people generally become who they are. And then on the wedding day, it is absolutely the excitement of that day. They forget all about the camera. And actually, that's the best compliment that someone can give me is to say, hey, baby, I forgot the camera was there. And um, I really pride myself on looking for the decisive moment on the wedding day to watch it build. But you see, for me, that doesn't start with the wedding day. In my mind, I've trained myself to pay attention and watch people's faces. And that even when I don't have a camera in my hand, I watch the face, like this young lady on the second row. I can see right now, I'm watching your face and the way that, the way that you communicate with your eyes and that you can get excited. I'm taking pictures with my brain right now of all of you here. So you don't have to have a camera in your hand to learn what the decisive moment looks like. So that if you did have a camera in your hand, you can capture it. And so that's the way my thought process is. Okay, thanks.